make it to the truth So everything is gone real smooth Ooh, I don't know about you, but for me It ain't exclusive if it ain't an M1 exclusive It's your boy BQ We right here in the heart of Silicon Valley Right here in the beautiful downtown San Jose Right off Sofa District for the ones that don't know uh, we're currently at Emlyn Labs, and once again, we are back at it with another special episode of the Emlyn Podcast. As the ones that have known and been tuning in, this is about the art of vision, entrepreneurs, creatives, and diving into the industry and what it takes to be great. Um, and as you guys know from the previous episodes, I don't just bring on anyone. I have to make sure that these individuals are doing some impactful, doing things with substance and intentionality. I'm really big on that. Um, so yes, uh, with no other further introduction, uh, thank you so much, L. James, for joining us today. Oh yeah. How are you feeling, man? I feel good, man. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, definitely uh, long overdue, so I'm I'm excited to be here. Uh, I made a little story post saying, you know, I haven't really been doing the yes, podcasts sir. or interviews or something like that, so I'm excited to, you know, start touching these podcasts and interviews and Telling my story a little bit. Um, are you the? Uh, are we the first one to have you on the podcast? Yeah. So this That's is this about. is this is the first one, y'all. Shout out to BQ, uh, oh. reaching out. Man, I got like three this weekend too. So we starting oh, it. We God. starting it off right. I hear you, man. The campaigning. That's what artists need to do out here. Independent artists. If Thanks. you got some shit rolling out, project. Stop just dropping a post and being like, my new music. Click the link in bio. You need a campaign. Nice. You need to do a lot more than just click the link in bio. I promise you it will do you wonders. Um, but yes, thank you, El Lobo, for joining us today. Oh, we yeah. appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously, uh, as mentioned in the intro, um, this is an entrepreneurship-based podcast, oh, yeah. creative, um, and obviously diving into the industry. And really my goal with uh, our interview today and just our conversation in general um, is to give an opportunity for the viewers and people that tune in uh, to receive value, to get insight. Um, and to learn a little bit about you and your background because sure. you know people see you on Instagram, they see you on the music videos. Sometimes they might catch you at Japantown, sure. but it's one thing to see someone on Instagram. It's another thing to actually uh, dive in into a person's life and like what sure. they're doing in their upbringing. Um, but for the few individuals that are tuning in um, that don't know you, I'd love to give you an opportunity to formally sure. introduce yourself. We got a camera right here. That's your camera. That's directly for dope. you. Dope. Um, for the ones that are tuning in, I want to give you a chance to just formally introduce yourself if you don't mind. Yeah, well, uh, my name is L. James. I'm an artist, entrepreneur out here in San Jose. I am the owner, CEO of the Coterie Den, which is located in Japantown, San Jose. Uh, I've been doing music out here for like damn near 10 years. Uh, I've been doing entrepreneurship for about, shit, about five, six years. Uh, came up throwing events very similar to BQ, you know, hosting fashion markets, doing live concerts, photo galleries, and then in 2021, kind of cultivating that space out in Japantown where we can, we, we can house it all. Um, through this 10-year journey, it's been, uh, you know, it's been a lot of finding myself yep. and uh, becoming more secure with myself, yep. a, a, a boy coming from the east side of San mm -hmm. Jose, you know, and... Uh, uh, just really finding uh, my my identity in this music, in this uh, multicultural place we call San Jose, yeah. a, a melting pot, if you will, of different uh, cultures, attitudes, identities. So it's been a great journey. Um, and yeah, I mean, shit, we got what four hours on this podcast. Let me tell you all my life story. <laughs> just, you know, that, oh, that's man. just a short summary. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But if we was here for days, man, we could we could. Definitely tell some more stories. Oh, no, we're definitely <laughs> going to dive in. We're going to get a uh, little bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, hey, man, being a creative and an entrepreneur, it, it is not easy. Mm -hmm. um, two different kind of like frequencies you got to be in. Yeah. Um, so I definitely uh, want to, I, I definitely want to ask you some questions about that to kind of start us off. But obviously, shout out to Eastside San Jose because you oh, are yeah. repping, you know what Hell I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and coming up as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, being born and raised in San Jose, it's, uh, it's awesome, you know what I mean? Because there's like we talk about, that there's a lot of people um, that aren't from San Jose that come here to do the exact same thing. Yeah. But they're, I think it's good that we lead by demonstration that they can be, it can be you, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But a young youth that might be sure. tuning in, it could be you. Sure. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm nobody special, you know what I'm saying? I'm just somebody who worked hard and put the pieces together. There's blueprints out there for us to succeed. You just got to know where to look and you got to put that discipline, like you're saying, towards it. Um, especially, you know, in San Jose where there hasn't been many mm -hmm. 
people demonstrating how to do it or there is you know it seems like no blueprint mm. um there definitely is and just look for it and and work hard and you can make it happen you can make it happen 100 percent. and um since 2014 you know yeah. doing music yeah i think that's something that illustrates on like kind of like the what it takes right even oh, yeah. you know because i think you and i might feel similar like i don't I don't feel like I'm at where I want to be at, right? Oh, yeah. Some might view otherwise, you know, like, oh, you guys are doing so much dope shit. Um, but we like we also know that what it took, you know, the 10 years of failure and rejection and dealing with losses and, and even self-doubt, uh, there's so many emotions, right, that go oh, yeah. into it. Um, so when you say since 2014, I, I, I just ask, like, you know, how did you, like, why did you decide to continue since then? Yeah, hell yeah. I, in 2014, shit, I was a senior at Silver Creek High School. I came into this game rapping with legends. And when I say that, I came into this game rapping with a dude by the name of Isaac Sandoval and this dude named Tark. And they now go by Peachtree Rascals. Uh, and they've been able to do this on a global scale and seeing, you know, my brothers being able to take their music and do it to that level. I knew early on, like, it was possible, yeah. you know, seeing is believing. So seeing them kind of take their music and get signed and take it on a nationwide tour. And that was just, that was, it made it that much more possible yeah. to me, you know, uh, and going through my trials and tribulations mm -hmm. after that through, you know, different uh, clicks and different music collectives mm -hmm. And then overall, you know, kind of dealing with it myself and doing that full independent grind. Um, it, it's always been the passion I had for the music. You know, music obviously has led, uh, led opened up other doors for me, owning a studio, uh, modeling here and there. Um, but it's always those opportunities derived from my love for the music. So I think in this 10 year journey, yep. I've just gotten more and more passionate mm -hmm. for the music mm -hmm. and it's opened up more opportunity for me. So that's, that's what I've kind of learned in this, in this 10 year uh, journey is like you become more passionate at what you love. You wake up and do what you love mm -hmm. and the right opportunities are going to come out of that. Like you attract the opportunities. You're exactly. Like just staying in that direction. Exactly. So how, how long did it take you to recognize that? Because I know, because I'm pretty sure you weren't thinking like, oh, you know, I'm finna, the money's going to start coming in or people are going to start wanting to tap in yeah. with you. Like, how did you start kind of clicking that, you know, that situation? Yeah, man, I came in here like kind of just like anybody. I wanted to be a rap star, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, shit, I wanted yeah. the money. I wanted yep. the attention. I wanted, you know, like, and that was kind of like my, you know, that was my thinking, like really, especially in 2014, being a youngin and you know, uh, going out there and wanting that attention and wanting that, you know, rap lifestyle and all of that. And, you know, obviously you, you kind of get around that and you see that it, it's played out, you know, and it gets old real quick. And, yep. you know, once all of that, the glit and glamour is kind of gone, how do you make uh, a real living off of this? Yeah. How do you make a sustainable career off of your creative passions? Mm -hmm. And I guess that, that question stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Like, how am I going to... Cause I love to make music, yeah. you know, um, and you know, realistically, am I going to get a million streams tomorrow? Yep. No. You know, a million streams is going to cover my rent though. Yeah, it's going to cover yeah. these bills. It's yep. going to, but am I going to be able to do that? Nah. So how can I, how can I make some other streams of revenue through my music? Mm. I could do performances. Yep. I can make stickers. I can you know, do uh, shirts, yep. I can MC. you know, there was all of these other ideas that I had, these passions that I knew could help me out right, right then and there. And it's, it's really interesting to hear you talk because I could definitely feel like your passion, you know what I'm saying, that you, this isn't something that you just like, you know what, one day I'm gonna be a rapper. And, yeah. and honestly, I didn't know that you went to school with these uh, individuals. I have heard of this group before. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I have heard a lot of positive things, like they've done a lot of amazing things. Yeah. And honestly, it's crazy to know how San Jose has all these talents yeah, that people know, just bro. bypass. Yeah. Like no one even knows. They wouldn't even know. Bro. Um, but I remember my boy Tyler Acosta told me about this group a long time ago. Um, and I, I do remember seeing some of their projects. <laughs> yep. Tyler shot 
me and Isaac's like first video, bro. So that's that's the that's wild thing too. Like right there, yep. little full circle. We was in Creekside, you know, yep. and shout out to my Creekside homies at that time. Yep. We was really like in there shooting videos and we was going crazy and and really turning up for the for the East Side right there. Man, shout out Tyler, man, doing yeah. things too. Um, so. And you asked a good question that, you know, I think most people in that journey would ask themselves, right? Like, how am I going to make this sustainable? How am I going to actually make this a living? Uh, which I feel like a lot of people maybe tune in and feel the same exact way. I know for sure, sure um, you know, we come across artists all the time that are still trying to figure out ways to make their music sustainable. Um, but one of the interesting things that really stood out to uh, to me about you is that you, you know, created the Coterie Den, you know? Um, in Japantown, by the way, Japantown is a very, uh, uh, you know, influential cultural landmark in San Jose, um, which has a board of uh, business, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. amazing as well. Levels, right, to uh, creating a foundation within the city. Um, and, and not anyone could just operate there. So that also, also speaks to the level of like community and how you uh, connected with the right individuals to make that happen. Um, at what point was like, all right, as an artist, I'm going to become an entrepreneur as well. Like, sure. at what point did that happen for you? I think I was kind of, like, already, like, building that without me even knowing. Just kind of, like, by by selling stickers, right? Like, these little entrepreneurial traits yep. were coming little hustles, out little side just, through, hustles, just yep. through the music. Like yep. I said, you know, like, I wasn't an artist who streamed hella, hella big and stuff yep. like that. So I wasn't getting, like... You know, these stream checks mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I physically had to go sell stickers. Yep. I had to go sell T-shirts. I had to go sell things directly related to my music um, in an era where streams were kind of like taking over too. I still had kind of like that uh, that E40 Mr. Fad yep. too short yep. mindset, you know, yep. selling it out the trunk, yep. which is kind of a mindset. Like a Bay Area thing. It, it, a mindset yep. here in the Bay. I don't think that yep. will ever go away though. No, you know, I don't, so I don't think like, I think there's still artists who are getting it from the street, from guerrilla marketing, from selling there and making a whole living off of just doing that, you know? So I don't think that aspect in the Bay will ever go away. And I think it's been kind of vital to a lot of the yep. Bay Area artist success. But I think kind of that entrepreneurial spirit, going back to the question, is like it, it built during my my uh, travels and obstacles as an artist, uh, just kind of naturally. And when... uh so. Since 2014, transition towards the pandemic. Sure. Uh, when, like, at what point in time was this after the pandemic, or was this before the pandemic? Shit, man, this was like uh, in 2018 and 2019. I was definitely, uh, man, I was, I was doing some heavy motion, bro. I was putting out some projects. I was working with a whole bunch of different artist collectives out here in the city. Mm -hmm. I was uh, hosting these shows that go by the name of Base Stock. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember uh, Base Stock, and uh, I those were like. Very similar again to like some of the stuff like and that was you're at doing the, and we fairgrounds right it was at the oh, fairgrounds yeah. and yep. you know stuff that's been very familiar to what yep. we do right in bringing community together and I remember putting a bill together of like twenty San Jose artists yep. which at the time was just unheard of yeah and like I know you feel this statement yep. too I'm about yeah. to say right yeah. now BQ I yeah. came up in a time in San Jose where showing love was corny bro. <laughs> where I came up yeah. in a time in San Jose yeah. where showing love and showing the next man like props was corny or you were soft. Yeah. And for a long time, that's how motherfucker, you know, yeah. try to look at it. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. it is what it is, right? Yeah. But I think too, like, you know, I, I think speaking on that a little bit too, yeah. it, it's a testament to how the culture has shifted out here. Yeah. You know, and I Definitely. know like I've talked to a lot of older head in that yep. time in that era which i know you talk you know we know about that yep. the culture has shifted a lot yes. and and i'm glad you know and i don't want to uh be here and, and talking like i'm in a bitter i'm i'm happy that mm. people are showing more yeah. love and there's more room for that and yeah. there's more room for collaboration yeah. but i go back to and i think why i'm bringing that up because that event during that time period yeah. was just so unheard of. Yeah, like yeah. 20 San Jose artists coming together. Yeah. It was like, huh? Like, no, it definitely what? was a different time period for sure. And I, I definitely, and I think it's important to address those things sure. because it's, it, it gives people context of what we've evolved from, sure. right? Um, because San Jose, and I talk about this all the time, like the industry, the creative industry is 
completely shifted. Sure. Now you see motherfuckers vlogging in public. Mm-hmm. You seen music videos being filmed. You seen influencers coming into town, celebrities. Um, not as often as we'd like, but we definitely recognize that it's 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 become a little more prevalent. Yeah. Um, so when I reflect back to that time period, there was motion, but I do agree um, to the extent that there was a lot more ego. Um, and this isn't like a blanket statement. This isn't everyone, but I have yeah. had experiences where people weren't embracing the next generation. I think that would have been my experience because I did come across some of the older artists doing certain things. And I feel like now the position I'm in, I kind of get a little more respect with some of those people. Um, but I think it, it's, it shows growth. And I Facts. think a lot of people had to lead by example, like what the things you did, Facts. because that's what it was going to take for people to be like, oh shit, like that shit has some motion. Maybe if I do this, it will, it will also benefit what I'm doing. Facts. Um, and I do remember base stock. I, I remember cause my boy, uh, my boy, Danny Madrano had a brand and he was showcasing over there as well. Um, so I do remember that time period. I, I was definitely, I remember attending that event. Is there any like, artists specifically that you remember that uh like that stood out that you had on that lineup uh man i not not specifically i just like you know i knew it was like a lot of just like up and coming talent which i hope right now i hope they're still doing and still chasing their craft you know i'm sure a lot of them are um to be honest you know just in in pursuit of my own you know dreams and aspiration with the business i unfortunately i don't have contact with the the majority of those it's been a long time that was 2018 yeah going six years now um and then transitioning like we were talking about like um how we transitioned as an entrepreneur to open the Coterie Den. Sure. You had the entrepreneurship uh, tendencies, which is where Bay Stock was born sure. and pushing the stickers and some of the hustles you did. Sure. So at what point in time, like what year would you say Coterie Den was born? Uh, it was, uh, we had got the space December 21st, 2021. Um, and that was during a, during a time like, um, we had got the space on Craigslist, to be oh, honest. Shit. I had come, came across that space nice. uh, on Craigslist, my business partner at the time, mm. and reached out and was like, yo, we had, we, uh, we got to go peep this. Uh, and, you know, being totally transparent, it's, it's, you know, and this is for motivational purposes. Uh, well, I'm about, I was about to quit, bro. I was about to quit this music shit. I was about to quit, you know, just, I, I didn't really see or feel the result. The passion was kind of, Teetering off yep. uh, that t- 2019, 2020 mm-hmm. period for myself was very, uh, I went through a lot of personal stuff. I don't yeah. want to get too, too like into the nitty and gritty, but you know, your boy had ended up catching a case. So I was going through legal stuff, going through, you know, a lot of personal things. And like, I felt like I was hitting um, an end point in my creative career mm-hmm. and like, life was hitting me in the face, you know, like uh, a lot of life stuff, a lot of bills, a lot of real life uh, situations, a yeah. real life obstacles, family drama. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I was at a point in my career, in my life where it was like, you know, you're either gonna, uh, you're gonna go full force at this yeah. and, and really put in the work mm-hmm. or you're gonna, you're just gonna, uh, not do this yep. you're gonna get your shit in order and, yeah. and just kind of just simmer down yeah and i'm so fucking glad that i was like nah fuck this let's go all in and i'm glad i'm grateful for the people around me at mm. that time mm. shout out uh another bit uh big dog out here who i want to give his due to is coach ant ant gardner yeah. um ant. he was there at that moment uh, and gave me a lot of good game mm. to keep moving forward. Mm. And uh, the conversations we, we've we had and had, especially at that time, yeah. definitely gave me that kick in the ass to like, yo, let's let's take this on and let's do it. So uh, December 2021st, we inked the, the deal for the lease. Uh, and, you know, we had gotten that spot. It used to be like a, a grocery uh, storage oh, type shit. unit. So it was... It was pretty dirty down there, man. We had to go in there and like completely renovate. Um, you know, I was doing my taxes for, uh, and that's another thing. All you business owners out there get familiar with the tax system and mm-hmm. how to do your taxes and your P and Ls for your business, and really keep track of all your receipts and anything you spend towards your business because you will get all of that. Yeah, get majority write-offs. of it back. Um, I, I just did my taxes and P&Ls for 2022, 2023. So um, it's just being literate 
on that stuff. And if you're going to go about it, go about it the right way. Obviously, make sure you have a, a great team behind you, mm-hmm. accountants, uh, all of that. But I, I definitely encourage all artists to get literate in that aspect of your taxes, of your accounting and your bookkeeping. But um, but yeah, shout out to, to you know, Coach Ant for really kicking my ass in that. And, and we, we got it going in December 21st. This is going to be our third year doing it. Uh, in February of 2022, we launched the website mm-hmm. for the Coterie Den and went completely public. Mm-hmm. In that first year, while we're doing renovations, we had the Instagram page where we were just doing kind of... Uh, private bookings yep. via dm yeah, if yeah, you hit tap in. Yep. If you tapped in with yeah, us yeah. And, and, like you know we'll work it out yeah, right yeah, yeah. while we're kind of working through the kinks because yeah. you know i don't i don't come from family members you know i'm the first in my family to yeah. own a business yeah you know to, to go anything about that route i didn't yeah. know about business insurance your llc's yeah. your taxes your, your the zonings and and this and that all stuff that i had to self you know educate myself on and uh obviously you know having a a team around me and people to keep me motivated and pick up the slack but um you know that that was something that really in 2021 we we took on um renovations educating ourselves on back-end business uh literacy and then you know going into 2022 and this year 2023 2024 i felt like we were just establishing our systems and then now going into 24 it's really just extending yep. our systems and really furthering to yeah. establish uh I'm, I'm so you know grateful that that 2021 year was like uh it, it was a lot of just learning and edu- yeah. and failing forward Trial right and error. failing forward yep now, i like you said that I, I i fail forward is something that i like to say as well because you kind of need to fail to learn that's part, that's a part of the process and a couple of things stood out to me on what you said um, like throughout your situation and, and evolving into making uh, two things is support system is so key, right? Like having someone that you can talk to about certain situations that maybe you not feel comfortable making it public and discussing with individuals. And sometimes it'd be like that with family. Like maybe your family is not the right person to talk to. Because for me, um, I, I relate with what you say about being a first generation business owner in your family. Um, because my family, you know, they come from Nicaragua. They migrated over here um, in like the 80s during to leave a civil war. Um, so my, my, I'm the youngest. So my, my two, uh, siblings, my brother and sister, they're 10 years older than me. Hey, I'm the youngest too. So shout out they, to babies, yeah, man. Shout out yeah. to the babies, <laughs> and you know, my, my sister went to SJSU. She went yeah. to Saratoga high school. So that'll yeah. give you a little context yeah. of like the environment she was in. And then my brother, he went to Hill college. So they both graduated college. My sister went to get her master's, but me, the black sheep, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I was, I went to De Anza. I went to play football. I love football. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. was the reason why I went. It wasn't even for school. It was like, I want to play ball. That was sure. my thing. But I ended up uh, messing up my Achilles, and then I stopped playing, and then I kind of had this whole like life crisis. But in that moment, it actually made me realize what I wanted to do, and that was like be an entrepreneur. And at this time, it was uh, sell clothes. And that eventually evolved to everything we're doing now. But that whole entire experience, though, it was nothing but... Um, having to explain to my family why I'm doing this and like how this is going to make sense in the future and like dealing with that pushback and making them like make and making your individual choice because uh at the end of the day you're going to do it oh, like yeah. you believe in yourself right that's what oh, it yeah. takes and that was my next thing was like choices it was like oh, yeah. you know the fact that you said you know what you experienced was like a make it or break it moment but you made that choice and made that decision to pursue this which ended up resulting into positive things and away from the things that you were uh of, were, were uh, discouraged that might you know take you out the game essentially nice. um so that really stood out to me and i appreciate you uh you know being vulnerable and sharing those things with us because a lot of people are going through this shit and a lot of the times nice. people don't even know what where to begin with the decision making um and also the financial literacy part is very important too um i think sometimes you just need to find mentors, you know, find someone that nice. knows the shit they're doing. Cause when I didn't know any of that shit, I was just going to my mentors that had a business or had experience with doing all that stuff. And then eventually they steer me in the right direction with someone that specializes in that stuff. Um, I, I, I love how you bring that up. Uh, mentors. Yep. I think that's huge. I've, I've had a lot of mentors like in my life, in my journey. Mm-hmm. And I think that's crucial. You know, like one of my mentors, RIP Ralph Giannini, mm-hmm. coach G uh, he was my high school uh, 
AP history teacher. Oh, I remember shit, he yeah. used to make all the basketball the players. Uh, the tell you, that, you know what I'm saying? He was yeah. also my basketball coach. Uh, but he had told me some uh, senior year that totally went over my head, bro. Like, you know, being a youngin and like just, you know. Just being young. Just being yeah. young, you know. He yeah. had told me this, but like, you know, as I got older, it really stuck with me. And it's about keeping your, your life like a bookshelf, right? You know, you have a shelf for every section of your life, you know, your personal life, your work life, your family life, your relationship life. And, you know, these shelves, you're going to get a book disorganized, da, 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 but never let your shelves become completely disorganized. Mm -hmm. You got to always to remember to keep your personal with your personal, mm -hmm. your business with your business. In my case, my music with my music. Yep. And that's that's helped me compartmentalize mm -hmm. a lot of things in my life and be able to take things one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, like doing music, like feeling the pressure of like, yo, I got to drop, I got to drop. Mm -hmm. And then the business like, yo, I got to make money, I got to make money. Like yeah. it's that mentality has been able to, to make me do things one at a time. Mm -hmm. Cause you know I got ADHD too. I'll be all over the place. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I like to say you know I'm I'm patiently impatient. Yeah, yeah. I, I know things take a long time. Yeah. But what can we do right now to to, yeah, <laughs> to get on that process? Even just a little bit. You know? Yeah. Or even set us up to like when it does happen, we're ready for the next step. Sure. I feel that I'm definitely uh, I, I, it has its pros and cons. It's a double edged yeah. sword. That's what I say. Yeah. I'd be like ready to go, but sometimes I'm like too ready to go. You know. Max. Uh, but yeah, no, I, and, um, yeah, no, shout out to the mentors. Mentors are very oh, important. Yeah. You're tuning in, you're trying to figure some shit out. Just ask the dude that's doing it already and succeeding right. in it and just ask them like, Hey, how did you do it? Or even if you don't know them, don't be afraid to talk to a stranger. Closed mouths don't get fed. You gotta, you gotta, uh, get, you have to get, uh, well, obviously the main, uh, the, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, that main, um, I'm trying to say is. Get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Sure. That's the cliche sure. saying, but I know it's going to take that first attempt to try before you can actually start doing that on a regular basis. Facts. Um, but that's going back to the mentors thing, I think that's a, a really important thing that you highlighted. So thank you for sharing that. And also um, to take it back to the Coterie Den, because I do want to kind of give you your flowers yeah. on what you've done. Um, for the ones that are tuning in that don't know about the Coterie Den, it's a Japan town in Northside San Jose. Um, it's a, uh, you know, a creative incubator. You have a recording studio, you have different sets, you have resources, uh, and yeah. you also have curated events, which I really enjoy. And I love to see that you do, uh, whether it's the open mics, which get a lot of traction, oh, yeah. you get people coming in there to do, um, like, uh, what is it? Correct me if I'm wrong, like judging some of the acts that yeah. get there and yeah, yeah. the acts that win and participate. Sometimes they win a prize. The prize can be like what studio time, yeah, or, like you know whatever the case is, which is all great because at the end of the day, some people just want a platform to nice. showcase their talents, and everyone feels like you know they got to do some whole other shit to just get that opportunity. But now nah, you can just tap into your local community, and it's available. Um, and you have tons of people coming in and out. You know, artists from all over the Bay Area. I've seen Stenomano 2 up in there, yeah. uh, Tope, uh, Scando, yeah. a, a long list of other artists that have came out of there. And I think um, the biggest thing I want to highlight, because obviously the community aspect is the most important, Thanks. but the thing that I feel like you and I off camera have talked about a lot is shedding light on the fucking city, though. Thanks. Like shedding light on San Jose and showing people what is even out here. Because I always enjoyed... Uh, like I used to have a studio in the South side, like in my homie's garage, like this yeah. is 2016, very similar set, but in a garage. Right. Yeah. Um, and this is like on rotor, like in the hood type shit. And I would get some rappers to come from like Berkeley, from Oakland yeah. to come down to the South side and experience it. We would go to the taco shop right down the street, go to the liquor store. Um, but it was just like showing them our culture because every time I would have conversation with them when I'm in Oakland, when I'm in SF going to trap art or first Friday and just networking, I was like, y'all got to come out to San Jose. Like, I'm Facts. always advocating for San Jose. Like, y'all got to slide to the tank. Like, y'all saying all these things they never heard. Like, what? Facts. San Jose? Like, they tripping out Facts. on how juice we are. Like, bro. Like, but like, nah, y'all sleep. You know what I mean? So uh, so that's what I feel like I resonate with you and what you yeah. do so much uh, when it comes to bridging that gap with the city. And I don't feel like a lot of people um, that are from San Jose or in this landscape would understand that unless they're, like, born and raised here and they've seen the shit evolve you feel me <laughs> so that's why it, it like yeah. it really hits you feel me when i when i see that um so that's my way of giving yeah. you your flowers yeah, yeah. i appreciate um, i like what you said man like we were born and raised here i was born and raised here you know what i'm saying like uh on 
King and Mc, Mc, Story McLaughlin. Yep. You know, like I didn't stopped all over the east side. Yep. I now live on the north side. Yep. I didn't travel all the west side, the south side. You know what I'm saying? Like I I've seen this shit develop from a jit, bro. From a little kid, like yep. seeing farmlands my family uh moved out here picking in the fields you know what i'm saying my grandma comes from sal si puede yeah. where cesar chavez was yep. you know what i'm saying my yep. family comes from the cultura and the history my pops having lowriders cruising you know the block and shit like that and seeing even the expansion and the uh, involvement of the lowrider cultura mm -hmm. and all of that and being you know monumental and uh having a soundtrack of the you know the ex uh yeah. The appeal of the cruising band, yeah. right? And just that whole like that whole time period, bro, yeah. felt like a movie, bro. It, it really is, did, bro. Because the history I have connected with my family mm -hmm. and the music that was coming out, just having a soundtrack for what yeah. was going on, it was it was truly historic. And like that shit, that's what I'm passionate about, yeah. you know. And it's true, authentic passion. It's yeah. not like just doing this for the gram it's yep. not just like i have family members who have gotten pulled over just for cruising yeah. and gotten taken jail for it's just crazy. for cruising so crazy. like these things in the city truly mean something to me it's not just for an instagram post it's not just for these things truly mean something for me yeah. and i think people who you only feel that if you were born and raised here you know and that's no saying? knock on anyone that's you know tour you know we got blanca in the <laughs> sure Diego. sure sure but he, he one of us you feel me yeah, so yeah but i but but i understand wholeheartedly what you're saying because I remember San Jose being affordable. You yeah, feel me? I yeah, remember, yeah. you know, the landmark, Shakey's Pizza. You yes. feel me? Like, that shit Come on. will always be a part of the culture. Um, and it's up to us as creatives, owners, business owners, to tell those stories. Even, like, what we're doing right now, we're telling the story. Facts. But eventually, it'll, be, it'll evolve to new music. It'll evolve to events. It'll evolve into movies. Like, that's the goal, right? Facts. To just kind of put that out there and also shed the example. So... I appreciate your passion, man. I really appreciate it. Even though we come from different sections, it's still the same city. Facts. It's still the same love. Facts. And that's something I always tell people because there used to be a time, too, where people were so, like, sure. territorial on the it sections. Was. Like, yeah. hey, Hell yeah. I'm from the south side. I'm Hell from yeah. the east side. Y'all suckers. Like, y'all yeah. weak. I'm like, nah, bro. We from the same city. Let's not get Hell it yeah. twisted. My grandma lives on fucking the east side. My mm -hmm. aunt lives on the east. Yeah. I got I do business on the Capitol Flea Market. Yeah. Like, you know, I touch base on the west. Yeah. Like, we have history all throughout San Jose. Hell yeah. Um, and I always felt like that was just us living in our own bubble at the time. Um, after like going traveling and experiencing the world a little bit, you realize that San Jose has a lot to offer, but you also realize there's also a crabs in the bucket mentality, um, especially like in the hip hop space and, and the small business space. Like there was always see, and some some of it is still around. Don't get me wrong, um, but I try to lead by example by doing the opposite, and right. I, I I feel you do the same as well, um, and. Um, you know, just try to focus on what we can offer, what type of cultural export we can give, um, and I, and you're doing that already by bringing the artists from you know from the Oakland and SF and and the V um, to, I, to your studio. I you think know? just to circle back on that too, man. Like, there's been a lot of artists too, like that I didn't even post on the gram or that yeah. have slid through yep. and just came through for the experience, bro. Yeah. And like, I'm telling you right now, your favorite rapper loves San Jose. I'm telling <laughs> no, you right true. now, it's your true. favorite rapper, he loves San Jose. True, true. And that's, you know, because of the culture that's out here, because they can go get their whole drip in Japantown yep. or, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Valley Fair. Yep. Uh, your favorite NFL player loves San Jose. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you know what's funny you know, about, <laughs> you know what's so funny about you know what's so funny about Valley Fair though? Every time I talk to someone that does go to San Jose yeah. but hasn't experienced the culture, yeah. they're like, Oh yeah, I go to Valley Fair. I'm like, hey, don't get me wrong, I love Valley Fair. Yeah, yeah. That's a spot, Santana Rose, a nice little vibe. You take yeah. like, a little shoddy, whatever, go to uh, Valley yeah. Fair. But you gotta slide to the east, you yeah, gotta yeah. slide to downtown. Nice. You nice. know what I'm saying? Uh but no, there's all truth to that. And there's definitely a lot of people that uh that speak highly of San Jose. And honestly, even when we did uh, any given bars on season uh, ten, uh, D'Lo came to do a, a, yeah. a, a verse with us one time. That was like a big moment, right? Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit, D'Lo yeah. played me," you know, saying "No ho." Um, but I remember just actually having a moment to talk to him, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, bro, you know, I stayed on the South Side. You know, I was living on Blossom Hill for a few." I was like, "What? You're telling me you was there the whole entire bro. time?" And I had no fucking idea. It was like shit like that. That was like, like he ain't there no more. But I'm saying like at that, I was like mind blown, bro. 
I was, Mind blown. I was in LA recently. I went to the Chicano High. I got booked yep. to go out there. I was chopping it up with Baby Bash, bro. Oh, I, I see You that. know, yeah. and just with, same thing. We was yeah. having a moment. Bro, his manager still has a 408 number. Mans used to stay out here during his whole run. I don't, I don't know if you know that, but like during that whole, he used to record out of here in San Jose, bro. He was telling me all this like, that he was out here in San Jose, you would yeah. never thought that. I mean, he's from Vallejo. He's a yeah. Bay Area kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it was just kind of like blew my mind, bro. Like when he was just telling me that he used to stay off Alma yep. and that they used to have a studio out there. You know what I'm saying? And like uh, and his manager still being out here and him yeah. still coming out here from time to time, too. So it's like they know about san jose yeah, the world the world too. knows about san jose for sure and that's something i learned too talking to some of the ogs that i've connected with like they be putting me on game about like some of the labels that used to bring people out here mm -hmm. some of the mm -hmm. uh, talent even e40s to step out here i mean shit remember that video that went viral with chris brown yeah. uh turning up at the seven trees yeah uh, the rancho venue like, well oh, they dance over there boom start shooting like oh shit you know what i mean like that shit went viral all over the internet, but that was, yeah. that was in Seven Trees. Yeah. Southside. Like, Facts. It's stuff like that that, you know, I, I, I'm glad we're having this conversation because we're giving a little bit. We're giving you all a little bit. Yeah. There's a lot, but it's just a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but yeah, just to get back on subject, I definitely want to go because I have way more questions yeah, to go yeah, into. Yeah. You did mention Baby Bash and you talked about the Chicano Hollywood yeah. uh, Elevate Conference. Um, that's something I've seen you post on social media. Hell and yeah. that's the thing, too. Like, what I appreciate you, too, is, like, you you navigate in different sections. You go to different cities. You try to touch and spread the word. Spread the San Jose name. You know what Hell I mean? Yeah. Um, I've seen you in Oregon. Um, do some shows in, in L.A. Um, but that one stood out to me in particular because it's important to about representation, right? Like, you're, yeah. you're showcasing the Chicano culture that exists out here in Northern California. Um, so like, what's that experience like, um, like being in those environments? Because sure. there's not just artists there. There's like, you know, actors and yeah. people that own businesses. Like, you know, what, what, like, what did you take away from that? And like, how, how'd you even get there to begin with? Uh, yeah. I mean, first of all, shout out to Chicano Hollywood, shout out to Johnny and, and Beth Murillo. I mean, that's familia. Shout out to you guys. You guys have believed in me, you know, and given me a lot of opportunity. And, you know, Johnny Murillo, who mm -hmm. runs Chicano Hollywood, is from San Jose. Oh, word. So if, if San Jose's about. influence, that, if that doesn't speak it, and this man has been out in L.A. Uh, putting on for Chicanos and creating a foundation for Chicanos to really put us to the mainstream, I'm going to tell you this, bro. Chicanos are mainstream. Latinos yep. are mainstream. We are 70% of the consumer market yep. of, of, of multimedia uh, consumption. Latinos are the highest. Yeah. So how are we not mainstream? Yeah. You know, why what was are, that number? Sorry, I, it's 70%. 70% of That's the market, number. which is more than half, dog. Yeah. Like, you know, when, and you've heard multiple artists say this, you know, especially in Houston. Like, yeah, I remember who's, a video. You yes, know, a Bum B saying who's, who's, who's majority of the people at the shows is, is Mexicans, it's Latinos, yeah. right? And we're contributing to the GDP, to the, so like, it's only right that our faces are up there in yeah. the mainstream. And I love, you know, Johnny's education he's putting out there and, you know, what that organization is doing for Latinos in Hollywood space. Uh, you know, they work directly with like Hulu. They have their own uh, plat or their own platform out mm -hmm. to streaming platform called yeah. Chicano Hollywood TV. Uh, I did right. uh, a music program with them where I was an MC on there. Go check that out. Uh, but yeah, man, they had invited me out to the Elevate Conference to speak. Uh, I was part of like the new musica and upcoming entrepreneurs. So I was up there with Baby Bash's artist. Her name is Mia May. Um, I was up there with this guy named Mike, Mikey. Uh, he's, a, he's a huge TikTok influencer and singer as well. I believe he signed to Danny Trejo's <laughs> label. Um, but it was, it was dope to be up there with, with artists who have that label backing yep. and they're fully label supported. And this kid out of the East side of San Jose, independent uh, via Wolf Records, Coterie Den, just up there speaking his truth. And like, you know, deservingly feel like I, I should be up there, you know? Um, and I think that's, what's kind of like been my, been my, and why I kind of gained success too, is because like in these moments, I feel like I've always stepped up to the plate. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I've I've never like tucked my tail or if like, you know, missed an opportunity. I'm very keen on like, you know, if a big opportunity is presented to me, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to kill it. I'm I'm ready for this. You know, that old saying like, stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. You know, I, I stay ready at all times. And thankfully, you know, when I went up there, uh, you know, I was prepared with the questions. I, I killed every question that they thrown at me and I was giving away real advice, you know, where uh, some of these artists who are signed to the label, there was a question as simple as like, how do you get booked for your for your shows? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these label artists were like, well, you know, my manager uh, tells me to be X, Y and Z and I get ready and I go there. Right. Mm-hmm. But like yeah, but not, not <laughs> out, doing on out, their own. Yeah. Out here for independent artists, how what what yep. information did I take away from that? Yep. Uh do I that I need to have a manager that I yeah. need to but if you're not even making sure like uh, does a manager even make sense for an independent artist? You know what I'm saying? No, so not, not in today's time. It, so that's I, our, that's my opinion though. Yeah, and I and I think, you know, it's just as an independent artist, how is that? How do you get, you know? So my answer was kind of around like, well, if you're an independent artist, do you have an EPK? You know what an EPK is, and it's a, it's an electronic press kit, mm-hmm. which is basically your digital resume mm-hmm. of the shows you've done, the accolades you've mm-hmm. done, your achievement. Okay, once you get your EPK, who do you send that to? Yep. You're going to hit up the Catalyst Instagram and shoot it to the DM, mm-hmm. like 100 other artists. Mm-hmm. Like They're going to look right over that, right? Who are you looking for? You mm-hmm. should be looking for the talent agent. Mm-hmm. You should be looking for the talent recruitment mm-hmm. or, you know, which... Go on Google, type in who is the talent agent yeah. for da da da. These things are easily accessible. Mm-hmm. You send them your EPK, maybe one or two times. Then they're gonna respond to you. Maybe it's like, uh, we don't like your stuff. Yeah. Maybe next time. Or hey, we're gonna give you a chance. So I think it's giving like, it's a real game like that. Not some like, oh, my manager does Not that the for traditional me. Traditional route. Yeah. Because independent artists is a whole different lane compared yeah. to the old traditional label system that we've always known growing up and we all hear the interviews of all the you know uh all the famous people that have utilized these platforms and are broke and don't nice. even know how their money was being allocated and how these people benefited off of their success uh i think that time is over now you know yeah. I, I mean i think like examples like with russell you know he's definitely given that um that what's it called like that's that formula more exposure and i feel like that's always been a bay area thing though like going back to the bay area thing it's always been in our dna like the larry junes the e40s the two shorts the mac dre's i mean everyone has been on that type of hype and and honestly bro there's something about bay area silicon valley like there's something about business that's just this is the mecca of business so I feel like when it comes to the artist stuff, it was only inevitable that they took these traits. And, you know, and then Master P came to the Bay and the Bay, he was talking about, he took that to Houston and did his label and then they did his thing. It's like, you know, Bay Area, you know, we have our moments where we get the credit. Um, but I think there's something deeper, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. really like a, even the entrepreneurs that we know, like we all doing our own shit now, you know? Um but to go back to your point about the independence, uh, independent movement and kind of giving that game, I think that's super uh, valuable. And I think a lot of people probably got a lot of valuable insight that day because, yeah. I mean, if they're talking about a manager, I mean, to be honest, a manager at this time is kind of like not even needed at all. You could do you got Instagram, you could do the DMs, you have your own email, you can do your own website, you can create your own uh, digital portfolio. Like uh, there's even softwares that you can buy, invest in yourself to get uh, public data to do the outreach directly with the person that's making the decisions. Um, but that's, you know, this is where we get really deep into like how you actually get those results. Facts. But um, that was cool. I didn't know and, what an EPK was. So and, 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 the game. Yeah. And I guess too, just, you know, for artists out there, like I've been in this game 10 years, I never had management. I, you know, maybe now I'm considering it just because I do have a lot of shit going yeah. on with the business. Maybe and, it's more of an admin. You know, yeah, may, yeah. yeah it, and now I think out of necessity of me just growing bigger and, you know, becoming more biz- busier, I think a manager may be needed. But I I heavily suggest for the independent artists, like, you, you should be educating yourself on how to do all of these things before you have somebody else come in and tell you how to do it. And, you know, be self self-literate. For sure. There's no reason 
why in 2024 you should be getting bad deals anymore or you know there's been too many people come out yeah. and talk about too this many. shit to yeah. like Countless. sit there and keep getting played yeah. you know like no more no more um i also want to uh, highlight uh, your previous project uh yeah. you know from east side with love uh, yeah. i know that was produced by tope and you had an, an, a really dope campaign where you had the low rider you did a oh, lot yeah. of campaigning around that project um and i just want to kind of get your feedback on like you know that process because i felt like the way you rolled that out that looked like you know this is my stamp like this is who i am this is me introducing myself because you've been like you said i've been in the game for 10 years mm -hmm. but there was something about that project that gave me a feel that you were like this is who i am you feel me nah definitely i think that project definitely changed like my life a, a lot of people's lives around me just like in a sense maybe not like financially or like yo we're, we're hella rich or this yeah, and that yeah. but i think it really showed people like what a full rollout for an album for a project especially mm -hmm. like just in the area mm -hmm. is supposed to look like and dropping that album then taking it on a full west coast tour mm -hmm. Uh, dropping visuals for it every single day like that was something where all of my knowledge in this game had gone into that rollout into the planning into the preparation in 2019 I had a headline show at brick and mortar um that I was in 2018, 2019, y'all, I was killing the game, man. <laughs> and, and I had, you know, my own, I, I, I yeah. had my own headlining show at, in SF and mm -hmm. uh, Tope Got the Dope opened up for me wow. on that bill. And that's the first time I met Tope. And Tope was a rapper at that time. And I was like, I was like, who this white boy on stage, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? That's but crazy. Tope is nice, bro. Don't don't get it fucked up. Tope can really rap too, <laughs> bro. Like, man's can really rap. And I remember uh the day after, or not the day, like a couple weeks after the show, after you know, he got off stage, chopped it up with him. I'm like, hey, bro, you nice. He told me, hey, I make beats too. I just moved here from Portland. I'm trying to work with some artists. He's like, you're dope as hell. This is your headlining show. Like, let's get some work in. Two weeks go by. I link up with my guy Tope in one of like he was he was in a uh, he had like three roommates at the time so yeah. in his room uh with his clothes and his hamper he had yeah, like yeah, a yeah. little uh setup yeah. and i remember him cooking up beats and he had made three beats for me that day and i remember he charged me like i think it was like 150 200 for those three beats at the wow. time right and at the time, you know, I'm, I'm an upcoming artist, bro. Like yeah. 200 bucks for yeah. me at the time was like, hey, damn, man. here goes a couple mils. Yep, and, yep. But I was like, you know what? Nah, I, like I, I want to lock in with bro because yeah. I see something like here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Ended up buying those beats. Um, that 2019, you know, I went through some legal problems. I ended up catching a case and I completely stopped doing music for like a good year, bro, while I was handling that. And I remember telling tope like yo bro i'm going through some shit right now um i you know i'm gonna be down for a little bit if we can circle back with this i would love to do that you know and during that time of me figuring shit out um you know i i didn't really talk to tope didn't really have no communication yeah, yeah. Went through my shit. I I wasn't even posting on social media or nothing yeah, like that too. Yeah, yeah. Time was just what going. you know. Twenty twenty one hit. Um, my situation had passed. I had gotten everything expunged. Whoop whoop. Mm -hmm. And you know, I got back outside. Started dropping music. Um, I had dropped a song called Todos Unidos, mm -hmm. which was in response to the BLM yep. and everything that was going on. Yep. Which was a very powerful song. Yeah. And if you have not checked out that song go check out that song i feel like that song doesn't get enough reckon i mean i can care less about yeah. the fame but i want you guys to listen to that message that i was saying in that song i feel like that doesn't get heard enough yeah but once i start dropping that song i remember tope reached back out and was like hey it's time brother yeah, and yeah. by this time like he had just just started working kind of with with yeah, russell yeah. maybe had a yeah. song they were mm -hmm. working on Marlon Seven. And I remember when simultaneously when me and Tope were working on our project, him and LaRusso were, were working on Marlon yeah. Seven. So I remember Tope would go from my sessions yeah. to LaRusso sessions and he would come back like, yo, this guy just rapped for an hour yeah. be in, in the trunk of his his pop's truck yeah, yeah. and filmed a video. Yeah. And like to, to the, at, you know, at this point, we're like, fuck, who's doing that shit, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then, you know, so to be able to kind of see, like, the LaRussell movement, like, 
you know, obviously from, from, from yeah. the outside, but yeah. I guess being a fly on the inside too through yeah. like taupe, yeah. it's really been magical, bro. Yeah, it's it's been like, again, seeing is believing too, yeah. bro. Like going back to my homies, right? Mm-hmm. Peach Tree Rascals and shit, yeah. seeing what they were being able to do and then seeing guys like LaRussell, that just, they motivated me even more to be like, yeah. okay, like not in the fact, like in a cocky way, like I could do this too, but like, yeah. nah, I could, I could do this too. Yep. Like yep. motherfuckers is really doing it mm-hmm. from the Bay, this independent grind. Yep. Like I could do this shit too. Yeah. It's know? beautiful how inspiration works, right? Like, yeah. like, you know it, like you kind of tell yourself it, but when you see someone within proximity or even from afar, uh, it kind of gives you that like reassurance, like, oh shit, like this, it really is, like Facts. I am right, you know what I mean? Facts. Um, and it takes a lot of humility to tell yourself that, you know, you knew it, but somebody else kind of gave you that oomph to like really like push it to that direction. Facts. That's what's up, man, it's crazy. So that, that tells me that you've known Tope for a while and the relationship or- was organic and eventually evolved into something bigger. That's cool. And I think it, it translated on that album, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it, it, was a, it was a project, too, that, you know, if you haven't already, go, go stream that, man. From the very beginning, the intro, we have skits on there. It's a very just well-put-together piece of music, you know, an album that I have, like, deep sentiment towards and that I feel like you'll be able to hear while listening to. Uh, my, one of my favorite tracks on there and this ties back into that story of me meeting tote for the first time when i went to that studio i bought three beats off of him i ended up losing all of those beats during what i was going through yeah but circling back when we were working on the project tope ended up finding one of those beats bro that i first purchased and the right intro, the, the intro on the album yeah. is one of those beats that wow. I first bought. So it was just like this. This project is just like you know a deep sentiment value to me and like where I was personally, the growth and just like yeah, I think it really, I think in a sense too, you know, it stamped, um, it stamped the region, bro. It really did. It stamped South Bay. Like we're here. Like yep. you know, I, I know a lot of people like to tiptoe around like oh yeah, San Jose is the Bay or it's not the Bay, but like that project really and going to Seattle, going to Oregon, Mm -hmm. going to LA Mm -hmm. and have them like witness and experience this San Jose cultura and rock with it just gave me that that sense of pride and yeah. i think it's it's definitely translated to my team to the people around me to my fans i know they feel that too like that gave them like yo we're, we're here we're stamped like you know you can't ignore it no more nope. you know and building something yep. you know just like emblem just like the coterie den just like the music building something to where yep. something so good and so much movement you yep. can't ignore it no you got more no choice you but can't, to consume yeah, you, man yeah. you right here You're, yeah you ain't going nowhere yeah no, I, I agree with that sentiment because i i think it speaks a lot of truth of like how far you're trying to take it you know mm-hmm. like this is just the beginning i feel like that for sure um and um a couple songs on there uh you did a song with Stunner Man yeah uh and uh, Scando as well um, yeah that was that was off uh that was off the the other project that I dropped East to the East that was a an EP that I had did in the summer uh you know the homie Scando the Dark Lord uh started coming down to San Jose and and tapping in with me you know him and Neff would come by the studio and just vibe and and you know me and Scando would go like you know I, I resonate with Brad Energy he yep. is like he's just real like uh, I'm yep. I'm a fun you know what I'm yeah, saying we yeah. like to fuck around with each other yeah. we like uh, to yeah. cut jokes you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying we like to have a good time turn up so I feel like that project was a lot of that and like these guys you know what I'm saying they really my homies bro yeah. like this ain't no like music industry shit where i'm yeah. just like paying them to slide on me like both times stunner had pulled up i ain't i ain't never pulled you know and i ain't saying this because I, I rock yep. with stunner man yep. but i ain't i ain't pay stunner man to get on no yep. verse with me like that's really my homie like he really fucks with me he fucks with the movement and shout out to stunner man bro he real people in san jose yeah. love you out here bro i hope and i know you know that bro but <laughs> no, you know he, sure. it's just real people bro and i'm i'm blessed that you know through the studio and through music i've met like dope real individuals in this in this hip-hop space that's beautiful man putting putting the san jose in connection with the rest of the bay um yeah i definitely uh, i definitely feel that because he did give a shout out to uh uh to jubo 
uh, when he was on the Any Given Bars. And he always speaks highly of San Jose. Like, yeah. he talk about Jackie's place and, like, all the things that are going on. Like, he kind of aware of shit that's oh, happening. Yeah. And I think, too, like, just tethering, you know what I'm saying? Like, tethering Jubo in with a lot of these artists that come by. You know, it's like, it, we all look out for each other. You know, like, Jubo will get me tethered in with people, you know? I get Jubo tethered in with yep. people, you know? And, like, it's dope to see, like, what comes of that, right? Yep. Like, through the tethering of, you know, uh, me and Tope, like, mm -hmm. the tethering of Jubo and LaRussell happened, yep. you know? Yep. And, like, just, you know, whenever I see the family business, you know, T, which yep. I see it out, you know, yep. everywhere, yeah, yeah. that's San Jose. It really and that is. really is, yeah. bro. And it goes Crazy. back to San Jose being yep. the glue yep. to a lot of shit out here, yeah. not in the Bay culture, you know, and not just, like, here in the South Bay, but, like, no, our influence is felt all throughout California. It's felt all throughout California. And, uh, and it's, and it's, be, not because you can't ignore it no more. I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry. You can't. Yeah. You can't make your funny little joke and say yep. Bart doesn't come here no more. Bart's right in the east side. Going to downtown. You know, Bart's right in the east side. Like all the all the little jokes, all the little petty comments. It's yeah. it's out because like yeah. San Jose really really has been the influence and really is the influence now in the Bay. No, I agree with you 100. percent And it's uh, I just wrote that down. That's gonna be the title of the podcast. <laughs> San Jose is the glue. I like that one. Yep. No, because there's real, there's realness, and I, I also appreciate shout out to Jubo as well. Shout out Hell to yeah. Jason. Hell yeah. I really liked uh, how my you that up because, you know, what that that chemistry that you've created within the community, like that's a perfect example. And this is what I really want to highlight this moment right now is what it what it takes, right? to cross collaborate put people on introduce them even if it's something as simple as like hey you ever heard of this dude and one thing translates to another and then it goes on and it becomes something special i think that Facts. and I, i've had my fair share experiences with others and that's translated for them into other opportunities and that to me is rewarding like Facts. i don't even count any favors there's no monetary benefits no. it's just like seeing that translate i know God is going to bless me in return at some point in time, organically. Like, I'm not even waiting for it to happen. Like, it just happens. And I feel that, bro. Like, you know, we the type of people, bro, like, to where we can be glue for others because we yep. know how to make our own plate, too. Yep. You know? And that's yep. that's one thing I tell other people. I never, like, I'm, I'm not a gatekeeper, bro, because I... You know, I I never st stole off anybody anybody's plate because yeah. I'm already sitting in buffet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I know how to make my plate yeah. and help other people, and I know when like I if I can't help somebody yeah. too. And I think knowing that is important too. Knowing yeah. like when you can help somebody yeah. and when you need to pour into your own glass. Yep. Yep. And and I guess that comes with maturity. That comes yeah. with experience. That comes and with being wise. Being wise, yeah. right? But at, at one point too, like I was the type to pour into everybody's cup, and I'd yeah. I'd be looking at my cup like, damn, my yeah. shit's empty. No, you, you can't, know, you dry can't pour. From, you can't pour from an empty cup. <laughs> yeah, right? like facts. I agree with that one hundred percent. Um, no, it's beautiful, man. Beautiful sentiment, good energy. Um, but transitioning into current times, I definitely yeah. wanna. Um, and I appreciate shout out to my homie John Dell Sparks. You know, you all came through yeah. the other day. Yeah, yeah. Bypassed the P pad, you know what I'm saying? But y'all still <laughs> slid to Emlyn Labs to do a photo shoot. Yes, I know sir. you're doing a collaboration with Art by Rubex yeah. on a sweatsuit piece. Um, you guys are campaigning for yeah. the Japantown flea market. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to talk about that, share a little bit. Yeah, of course, man. Shout out to Rubes. Uh she's she's been supporting me for a long time and I've been supporting her artwork for a long time. Um Dope ass creative, dope individual. I know she's been doing it for a long time. We are collaborating on the J Town Flea Market. This is through her uh, brand, Art by Rubix. Uh, the sweatsuits will be out March 13th via her website. Um, for our Japan Town Flea Market series, she is going to be the main brand and kind of helping us bring in uh, other women vendors for this all woman led uh, Japan Town flea market so i'm super excited about that collab man uh the, the photo shoot was smooth too i know those uh sweatsuits are powered yeah. by the hustle tech yeah. of uh hustle jd tech, you yeah. know what i'm saying so uh and shout out jd too man uh just special energy bro yeah, and he's dude. been a guy too that has believed in the vision early on too and maybe not so much on camera we're seeing but yeah, yeah. We, we've had a lot of uh, dope conversations behind the scenes too and i know he's really on the entrepreneurship mindset and 
has been on that mindset yeah, for yeah. a long time and yeah. has been pushing that on social media. So um, just a genuine dude, too, who wants to, I, I feel like fits in that category we're, we're saying where yeah. can be the glue for others, too, because he genuinely knows how to get it for himself. Yeah. And I feel like that's... Uh, that's that's what kind of links you know links us all together too, yeah. bro. Because we see each other kind of yeah. doing that, and yeah. uh, it, it's dope. It, it kind of brings in, in in the bosses together. You know what I'm saying? I love to see it, man. But we yeah, shout out to Rubes, and we're gonna be doing uh, the J Town Flea Market on Saturday, March 30th, and that's gonna be an all women's uh, vendor roster. So if you're around the area in Japantown on March 30th, come by from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we open up our studio space to eight to 10 local vendors, um, vendors who don't have a flagship spot to usually vend out of, yeah. you know, um, which we know out here in San Jose is yeah. super expensive. Yeah, we um, that, yeah. And, you know, I know JD used to do some something similar, you know, to the pop up. I believe he used to call yeah. it. And you're super yep. familiar with yeah, doing yeah. that from your culture night markets. Um, it, it's giving, yeah. you know, local vendors just an opportunity, it's right? An opportunity that we've all been looking for and exercising group economics mm -hmm. right giving exchanging that local dollar keep circulating it within the community so nice. we can easily go to the starbucks we can easily go to safeway we can easily go to walmart we can easily go to uh zoomies we love them you know what i'm saying sometimes you got to get them groceries Facts. like let's buy local you know what i'm saying I, I always support um the markets the flea markets the pop-ups i think the concept in general it's not like we're recreating the wheel here. It's like it's something that you can you can you can copy and paste it and do it in your own way. Facts. But as long as you're opening it up to the community, I think it's an amazing uh, initiative. So I support Facts. it. And March thirtieth. I'm gonna I'm try to make sure we can drop this before then. Yeah, yeah. So it's in alignment because yeah, I, yeah. I tend to do this. We drop shit like after some shit happens. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I wish I knew about it sooner. Um, but no, well, I, well uh, if it's after, I appreciate y'all for yeah, sliding. Either, <laughs> either way, um, and uh, yeah, man, I, I'm gonna. I want to conclude it. Um, we're gonna come close. To, I have a I had a couple things I definitely want to touch base on. Yeah, yeah. We're coming close to the time, but um, uh, man, two things. I know you uh, you did the corner store in L.A. Yeah, yeah. Right? That was really dope. I, I thought yeah. it was just really cool to see someone from San Jose on that platform. Oh yeah. And I I admire uh, their platform and the things that they've done to build up to it. I'm a fan. Shout um, out Desi, man. Desi's my guy, man. And uh, I appreciate him for for allowing me to do my Dougie on there and like really fucking with the boy. So I appreciate you. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, and then, you know, uh, obviously you, you came on any given bars recently, too. Yeah. We're going to be releasing season 16. Um, I want to say like early April or end of March. Yes. Um, so we'll be expecting your episode yes. to drop. So we, oh yeah, you know, for the ones that made it this far into the Come podcast, on. we gave you a little gem. You are gonna see it. Come on, real, real soon. Come on, um, and you killed that shit. So I'm, I'm really on. excited to see that one. Um, <laughs> but to conclude it before we end it all off, I know you have some new music rolling in the 2024s yeah. or some of the you know give us a little exclusive man. I'm an exclusive. You got to give us yeah. The hell yeah. Uh, the exclusive is that I am dropping music. Yeah. yeah, don't worry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I've been I've been getting that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and you know, I have some great music out right now. Obviously, from the yeah. east side with love and east to the east. Um, definitely continue to enjoy those, y'all. Um, but new music is dropping, and I'm gonna just start dropping a lot of singles. Mm -hmm. Um because I have so much music that, you know, I never stopped recording. That's yeah. the thing, you know, like I, I do music yeah. daily yeah. and sometimes it's, it's yeah. songs that just like will never make it out. But yeah. again, I do music because I genuinely love to make music. Yeah. I don't make music to be the number one most stream artist. I don't yeah. make music to be the best artist. I feel like I am, I am the best artist. Mm -hmm. I don't need other validation yeah. for that yeah. you know and i, and I want to stay on on my pace with this music thing i know we get very caught up as artists uh yeah. looking side to side and yeah. w what artist is dropping this and especially in uh in an era where content fast content yeah. is so prevalent you know i i want to i want to remind artists to stay at your pace as well mm -hmm. and trust that you know trust that you are making the best music for yourself and how it's received is, is, is how it's received, you know what I'm saying? But make music that you genuinely love yeah. and that you want to hear and that you want to slap. And I promise everything, people will resonate with yeah. that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I don't like, 
I don't knock nobody now, bro. Like, there's there's a market for everything, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's music really where, like, I've read it to some artists where, like, I don't like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they got a huge cult following, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. So I don't I don't knock anybody out of this game yeah. no more, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that just, it, it helps, it eases me into my creative process, too, yeah. because, like, knowing that there's a, there's a market for anybody, mm. you know what I'm saying? And everybody. It I really want to continue to obviously feed into my market the people who believe in me since day one since you know my music maybe wasn't all the way a1 yeah. and they've stayed on this journey with me and grown with me because i could i'll tell you firsthand you know the first song that i dropped is not nearly as good as my music now but and you know my music is still only getting better so I appreciate those who have stayed yep. through through this long journey and yeah. I'm only getting better and we're only going up and I promise to give y'all more music more consecutively. <laughs> oh, no, I'll let it hear it. Um, and <clears throat> usually like when I conclude the podcast, I always ask the, the guests for a gem or some advice, yeah. but I feel like you just did it right now. You gave that nice gem. <laughs> so what I will do though is I will ask you a question because yeah. after we conclude this, you know, it is Friday. Yeah, yeah. So me and my girl after this, we're probably gonna go somewhere to eat. Oh yeah. So I definitely want to get your feedback on like the food spot, man. Like what you know, for the ones that ain't from San Jose, yeah. you telling them like you know, give us the top three, I guess. Because I know you know top, a bunch. Yeah. Let's give you three uh, slots. Man, there's this uh there's this taco truck called Tacos Chilanguitos. Um, they got the best al pastor. I love my al, al pastor with pineapple, with piña in oh, yeah. there. So uh, that's... Where's that, that one at? That one's off of fuck, off of Monterey. They're always moving, though, bro. Oh, so you got to, like, around. catch them, catch bro. Them. It's off Monterey, and I forget what the other street is, bro. Is it, is it like, uh, uh, south side? Monterey <sighs> south side? Or is it or before? Yeah, it's more like over uh, where that Walmart's at, the neighborhood Walmart. Um Oh, what are you talking about? By the uh, Santa, Alma. It's kind of past yeah, Alma. Near, near Alma. Near Alma over there off Monterey Road. But you got to catch them because they're always moving. Uh, Chilanguitos. I'm going to... Shit, man. <laughs> this, is, this is tough, bro. Just because there's so yeah, many great food spots, dog. Um, give us two more, though, man. We need uh, it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another South Side spot, bro, that I used to go to, you know, for the best breakfast spot, hands down, which is uh, Southern Kitchen. Right there, that hole I've in the wall. Never you never been, been there. there? I've seen it. Oh, uh, you never been there, it. Southside Cat. You never hey, been there. I got bro. my gems, you know. But okay, I have. I haven't touched that one. Though. That one's, uh, man, healthy, healthy portions over there, and I never, I've never left yeah. hungry. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And what's the last one? What am I gonna leave y'all with, bro? What am I gonna fucking leave y'all with? This is like, this is the hood spot, bro. And uh, I, I mean, this is like. Uh, a spot me and my uh, folks been going to for for a while. Uh, I don't know if y'all like uh, fish and chips, but it's oh, over there off, off White Road. It's called H and L H and S Salt or H and L Salt. The best fish and chips, deep fried fish and chips you will ever have. And that's you know that's just a little low key spot, hood spot. <laughs> that's the hood spot. What's the so, dish though? What's the dish you uh, get? It's the fish and chips for surely. They got like the fish and chips that are like the deep fried fish and chips that are like that long. You know what I'm saying? Um, hella good, bro. Hella good. Just it, it's fire. You're and gonna like, you're gonna hate me, bro, because I don't even eat seafood. You, you know, hey, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, my I'm, girl, she's for, a seafood person. It's for I'm all like, of my uh, religious people out there. It's yeah. lit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. on Fridays that we've been eating that. You know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that. For yeah. one that tuned in, made it this far. Uh, now you got some to check out when you come oh, to yeah. San Jose. You got oh, the yeah. munchies. You got to get something to eat. Oh yeah. Now we know. Oh, yeah. um, but once again, man, I just want to say thank you for coming down. Oh yeah. Um, as you mentioned, it was long overdue. Oh, yeah. We got a little more acquainted and been connecting. 2024 has been off to yeah. a great start. It has been. Um, I feel like there's gonna be even more things that will come along the way. Um, but I just want to say thank you for coming down and, and sharing your your experience, your story. Um, and giving people a little more insight of like who you are as a person and like I wish you nothing but the best um, I think nothing but positive things you've like I said you've been a part of this glue so continue to do the things you're doing um, continue to inspire um, and let's just keep going man let's That's do it bro. I can say, they, man. they don't want you know they don't want guys like us to come together oh, bro, no, it's because dangerous. because like it is dangerous. bro. like it really is you dangerous. know when 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 sides come together and that positivity come together yeah. but it's it's felt bro. Yeah, 100%. And, you know i respect what you've created here and seeing you know being out here be rubbing shoulders hustling yep. bro. i know there's a lot of this like uh too and i kind of you know before i know this is the conclusion but yeah. i just want to leave with this bro like you know a lot of this fake cool by y'all and stuff like that i yeah. think it's important bro like that people did kind of stay to themselves and build up 
their own platform. So now that when we do come together, our influence and our net can be casted yep. way further and our influence touches way further. So yep. I appreciate and I respect what you have built, man. And I look appreciate forward you. to continue yeah. to build oh, alongside more on the with way, you. Man. I think uh, you said it best. Like there's tons of it, but I think action speaks louder than words. We did some we did some project together at your studio. Facts. Came to our studio. I think the actions have been made. You know what I mean? Facts. So I'm gonna end it there. Once again, thank you so much. Shout out to the team, Josiah and Blanco. Thank y'all for tuning in, uh, thugging it out with us and making Hell this yeah. happen. Oh yeah. Um, shout out to Baby in the back, Lisa over there. I know she where she in the cut, but <laughs> we out here. Uh, but for the audience that made it this far, make sure you subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, all that good stuff. Let's go. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you follow the page. Follow my boy. Make sure uh, give him your give him your handles. Let's man. go. Come on. L James at L James 408 on all social media platforms TikTok, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, all that shit. Yep. Follow me. <laughs> and the Coterie Den. And the Coterie Den at yep. the Coterie Den. Go follow that. Follow that one before you follow me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> follow both two and one special. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, once again, thank you. It ain't exclusive. If it ain't an Emlyn exclusive, it's your boy BQ, my guest L James. And guess what? We out. Peace. Hey. That was right on. well executed. From beginning to end. That's what it's supposed to be right there. Three camera, everything. That was fire. That was, bro. That was. That was. Uh...